How hard is the MCAT? That's the question that I want to go over in today's video and I'll go through the stats of last year's matriculants, discuss what makes this test difficult, and lastly I'll tell you how you can overcome each test hurdle. Hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you prepare for the MCAT, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. As a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description of this video to navigate to specific sections of the video that you're interested in. So to answer how hard is the MCAT, let's get straight into some stats. During the last application cycle, over 50,000 students applied to medical schools and just over 21,000 students matriculated. The mean total MCAT score for applicants was 506.1, with the mean total MCAT score for matriculating students at 511.5. This means that on average, last year's medical school matriculants achieved a percentile rank of around 85%. With that said, a higher score can mean the difference between just applying and actually being accepted to medical school. Okay, so what does that all mean? Do you need to score in the 85th percentile or better on the MCAT to get into medical school? Not necessarily. Although this number represents the mean for matriculating students, there are students accepted each year with a lower MCAT score. On the other hand, there are students that achieve a near perfect score that are not accepted. What does this tell you? That the MCAT, while an important part of your medical school application, is not the only factor considered by admissions committees. So what exactly makes the MCAT hard and how can you do well on the test? Let me go through each common reason that students find the MCAT challenging and discuss some tips to overcome each one of these hurdles. First is the length of the MCAT, seven and a half hours. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Your success will require training and endurance. In general, you don't want the first time that you take the full length MCAT exam to be on test day when nerves are running high. It's best that you take eight to 10 full length practice exams throughout your MCAT preparation to provide sufficient practice. This will help you to prepare for many aspects of the MCAT, but importantly, it will allow you to get used to the length of the test and how to power through it. The next hurdle is that there are so many questions on so many different subject areas. This is very true, so to tackle such an expansive knowledge base, divide your MCAT prep into two stages. In the first stage, at least 70% of your study time should be spent reviewing content. Remember, studying content must come before in-depth practice that tests how well you are applying your knowledge. Take note of concepts that have interdisciplinary relevance, concepts that you have seen in multiple science courses, as these concepts will likely be addressed on the MCAT. Medical schools are not looking for students who can memorize complex information, but do not understand the mechanisms behind the facts that they've memorized. If you can't explain the why behind a concept, then study it until you can. So once you complete the content heavy phase of your studying, the second stage is to focus on the practice phase of your MCAT. So you want to switch gears now with at least 70% of your study time devoted to completing MCAT practice questions and full length practice exams. As you practice, focus your content review on topics that you find yourself missing during practice. A knowledge gap in a particular area will not only impact your ability to answer questions on that subject, but it can also limit your capacity to answer an interdisciplinary question. It's not enough to simply review practice questions and skim answer explanations. It's essential to learn from your mistakes. So ensure that you're taking ample time to understand why you missed a question so that you can approach each round of MCAT practice with new knowledge. Okay, let's move right on to the next hurdle. Many students find that the passage-based format of the test is difficult. So how can you approach these passages effectively? The first step is to understand the MCAT format. So on a passage-based exam, you need to understand where or how to find the answers for each question. For some questions, the answer will be within the passage. For other questions, you will need to apply your outside knowledge to determine the answer. And some questions will require a combination of these approaches to deduce the answer. Knowing that these three different question types exist is important in starting to understand how to approach a passage-based exam. If you can't figure out the answer to a question, it's likely that you've missed an important hidden detail within the passage. Now these tips work for all MCAT sections except for CARS, and that's because CARS is the only section that does not rely on outside information. The answer to every single question can be found within the passage. Now that you understand how the MCAT is written, what is the second step? The second step is to practice. So obtain as much practice material as you can. You need to practice passages for each MCAT session as well as several full length practice MCAT exams. A great source of these practice materials is found on the AAMC website as their materials most closely resemble the difficulty 
and the format of the actual MCAT. Finally, the last common struggle is that the MCAT is timed, so students find it difficult to manage their pacing throughout the test. When completing MCAT practice sections or full-length exams, try to mimic test day conditions as much as possible. Complete your practice in one sitting and under the appropriate time constraints. This is the best way to learn how to use your time effectively and to understand how test anxiety may affect you, as well as determining any weaknesses that you need to address. For CARS, aim to spend 10 minutes per passage on the nine passages. For all other MCAT sections, aim to spend eight minutes per passage-based question and one minute per standalone question. If you complete your MCAT practice with these guidelines in mind, by the time test day rolls around, you'll be proficient at how to pace yourself through the MCAT. So this will wrap up another one of our videos. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions I didn't cover in this video. Is there a particular section of the MCAT that you're struggling with? Let me know in the comment section and I'll get back to you with my recommendations. If you'd like us to help you prepare for the MCAT, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.